Hey up YouTubers, Simon B here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're keeping safe out there. So, if you clicked on that thumbnail, you and maybe some of your friends fancy getting into a bit of green laning. This week's video, I'm going to explain to you how I got into green laning and what I think is possibly, maybe, could be, the best way to get into green laning. So if you fancy a bit of that, as they say, stick around and stay tuned. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Yeah, so you want to start green laning then, do you? There's a lot of people been asking how do you get into green laning and what's the best way to get into green laning and um, what bike, everything. It's it, it's a complete minefield, but it's not that it's not that hard to do. You just need a few pointers. It's a bit like fly fishing, fly fishing, golf, and things like that. They're like a black art, aren't they? You've got to be born into the community to be able to do it. Well, you don't. As my, as some of you may well know. Uh, two years ago, it's been nearly two years, three years ago now probably, three years ago wasn't it, somewhere around about Covid just before, um, I got into trials, always fancy getting into trials, 50 years of age getting into trials, never done it before, so yeah, it's not a black art, you just have to find out a few bits of information to be able to do that, first things first, you need one of these don't you, so you need a bike, do you need a bike, is that the first thing you need, yeah, you need a bike to go uh, green laning, yeah, so first, number one, number one, a bike, what bike am I going to buy? Well, minefield, minefield, absolutely. Now, people will tell you, don't buy a KTM, don't buy a Husqvarna, don't buy a Beta, don't buy things like that. The maintenance schedule is, is that mad and you've got to change pistons, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. It's, no, rubbish. For normal green laning, there is nothing wrong with a KTM two stroke or four stroke. The only reason that the service intervals are very small it's because they are a very high tuned engine but that's for racing and if you're racing it you're pinned on the throttle most of the time so you're revving the nuts off it when you're green laning you're not that thing there has a oil change according to the manual i might may be wrong here so i might have to put something up i read the manual two days ago and with my autism i don't like to give you wrong information is it 13 hours or is it 16 hours Something like that, I'll change every 13 hours. That's if you're racing it, pinned to the throttle. Pinned, pinned, racing it. If you're not racing it, you don't need to. You don't need to be pushing that. This bike here is a 17 plate 350 EXCF. Uh, real bike, great for green laning. If it, had, if it had a seventh gear for the road, it'd be probably one of the best bikes you could probably buy. 50 mile an hour on the road, it's fine. You know, you're only doing stuff like that. Once we hit this, this place here, um, it's lane, road, lane, road, lane, road. It's uh, it's fine. Don't be frightened of buying possibly a KTM. The thing about it is you want something light for when you start off. Something you don't mind throwing on the floor because you are gonna fall off it. These bikes like to lay down. They get tired every now and again and they like to lay down. You go out and buy a 10,500 pound, even one of them, you'd be frightened of dropping it on the floor. So this bike has, this, we were talking about that bike where we had where we went for that. Guys are like, um, some other people on the, on the internet just waffle about nothing and go on diversion. Anyway, um, yeah, so this bike is a, is a 17 plate EXCF. It's done 13,161 miles. I think currently, currently it's got 540 hours on it. 540 hours. I believe it's had two pistons. I don't know if it's had a bottom end rebuild yet, but it's a four stroke. What's 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 the problem with them? No idea. I was watching somebody the other day on a, on a, on a, on the on the YouTube, and he was on a, a 350, um, a 350, a Honda 300L, and uh, said, "Oh, you don't you don't want more, you want one of these because the, the 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 service intervals are dead long, and you don't want those KTNs because you got to change the oil on time." Rubbish, absolute rubbish. So. You could get one of these, you don't have to buy a 17 plate or a 22 plate, you could buy a 15 plate, you could pick these up for about, what, three grand? As long as it's it, it's it's not been raced, if you can find somebody who's, who's sort of looked after it, there's not really much to to go wrong on them. You could just come and join us. Look at you, you're a bit flighty, aren't you? 
Yeah, there we are, you're all. Further videos back in these with green laning, WRF 250. Um, there's them DRZs, 300, four, 250s, 450s, things like that. We want something that's that's a little bit lighter because, you know, the 300Ls are all right, but um, you've got crap suspension, so you've got to spend £1,000, 800 quid doing the suspension up. You've already suspended for six grand, plus it weighs 140 kilo. If you're going to buy something, if you're going to look at something like that, you might as well buy a or buy a gas gas uh, ES 700. They weigh the same, but it's got 700 engine in. You know, but you're only learning, so you don't need to spend a lot of money because you are going to throw it on the floor. And you're going to bend something, you're going to break something, so you might not like it. So that's the sort of bikes that you should be looking at. Um, I can't I can't tell you which one to get. Um, and then once you get the bike, there's some other things to do. But we'll discuss that. We'll get on the bike and we'll have um. I'll we'll run up this lane and uh, we'll have a look at um, once you get a bike, what do you need to do to it? Because there's one major thing you need, really need to do to it. If you don't do that thing to it, it's not going to be enjoyable to ride. So, we'll get on the bike here. Eh? See you in a bit. Yeah, so you bought your bike, you go on green laning. The first thing you need to do is get that suspension set up. If you don't set that suspension up, riding out on here is just going to be not very enjoyable. Because you need it to be you need to set it up. That was a bird of prey. You need to um Set it up for your weight and set the preload. You need to set the um, the sag on um, on your bike for your weight, and then you need to set the rebound and the compression. A lot of green laning. You need it soft. If you don't set that suspension up. It's going to throw you off. <clears throat> you need the travel and you need the softness of it so the front end doesn't wash out, the back end doesn't bounce around everywhere, and you get traction. So, whatever bike you buy, set the suspension up first. Once you're setting your suspension up, set your um, your ergonomics of your bike up. If you don't set that up as well, it's going to be uncomfortable to ride. Most of the time, depending on where you're riding it, you want it set up for mostly off-road riding. And then sort of things that um, position your handlebars. Okay, I see on the handlebars. So you stood up, handlebars. They say should come up straight from your forks and um, your fork should be there so when you stood up that's the way it should be. Little things like your brake should be slightly higher so when you stood up you've only got a little bit of a, a tilt to use your back brake because when you're on, out on <laughs> give me breath back um, when you're out on the lanes you should be using your back brake be using that front brake leave it alone get that back brake um gear shifter gear shifter should be level if not one notch above your um foot peg when you stood up makes it easier to uh, change gear and to change down little things like that will make your off-road riding absolutely so much easier so much enjoyable <laughs> buy a bike and just go just go out on it and then fall off it suspension makes a hell of a difference I'm telling you absolutely so you've got your bike you've set your suspension up um what to do, do next well, you want a bit of equipment don't you you don't have to go spending loads on equipment you don't have to be spending loads on them um, you know i've got a set of climb gear you know i'm at the age now that I quite like nice things and um, thought bugger it, and live once. Um, but yeah, advice would be um, 
make sure you protect your knees protect your ankles get a half decent set of boots you don't need a set of motocross boots but uh, stuff like that um, you just want something that's going to sort of protect you um, in case you do have a mishap which you're going to have and don't be frightened of it because when you do fall off you've got to learn of why you did fall off and then you don't do it next time because I'm telling you you are going to fall off that's all I used to do was fall off so yeah protection protect your knees I've got a pair of uh, a Seabis um, knee guards they were expensive you don't need um, doing this sort of game you don't you don't need a set of knee braces or anything like that just something to protect your knees because if you can't walk you can't go to work you can't do a lot of things your top end of your body is not really that important you know as in your, your legs if you know if you do your knee and you're, you're buggered out you can't go anywhere you can't do anything so that's the way I think about it so your top end you want something to protect you possibly your back your elbows and um, and your shoulders <coughs> you can get you might have an old um, motorcycle jacket just wear that on the top it's fine it's not a problem um, gloves see gloves is a weird thing really because you, you would need really need two pairs because on the road if you come off on the road this tarmac um, doesn't have to get rid of um, skin pretty quickly and if you've only got a pair of uh, enduro gloves on they'll um, instantly just go straight through so you may want two pairs of gloves one for road use check once you get to a trail um, it's entirely up to you um, helmets get a helmet that fits you no matter how much it costs there's nothing worse than an ill-fitting helmet um, I'm gonna do um, a video on the best helmet in the world I'm gonna tell you about what the best helmet in the world is but yeah get a helmet that, um, that fits you um, try a Lord's on get one that fits you usually with a motocross and stuff like I, I, this is an LS2 I had a HJC before see the HJC motocross helmet fit, fit me and it fit me well but a HJC in the same size in a flip top or anything else doesn't a Raffi 9 or whatever you call them um, they don't weird but that's helmets for you this is an LS2 it's only, it's only cheap it's only 80, 80 quid gold, gold standard it's fine you know if you don't want to buy a helmet you could probably use the one that you, you that you use on road if you wanted to nothing wrong with that you don't need the uh, latest up to date stuff so <laughs> this green laning isn't that easy really is it so they're the sort of things so, so you've got your bike you set your suspension up you set your um your ergonomics of your bike out you've got your, all your protective equipment whether you beg stole borrowed it or whatever where do you go riding? Where do you go riding? Well, unless you know somebody that um, that knows the lanes, a lot of this, inf all this information for these green lanes are available on your local council sites. Everything. It's not a secret, but sometimes it takes a little bit of work to find it. My other advice is join glass if you're on a 4x4 or join the TRF there is another one I think I can't remember what it is join the TRF yeah I know it's 55 59 quid a year so what whoopee um, but they're the guys that are keeping these lanes open for you you lot for us us them they do all the maintenance work they put new gates on keep the farmers everything happy um, so just go and join them and it gives you the information of all the green open lanes up-to-date information for every lane in this country um, I'll show you a thing now I'll go through and um, this here is the green the green lane map green 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 map they call it the green map once you paid your 59 quid you get access to this and it tells you everything it tells you everything where everything is all the lanes are and it's just it, 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 that's worth the, the, the weight in gold so join the TRF join somebody so that's how to find the green lanes. Easy. 
So we'll get back on the bike and um, talk about something else, eh? So you bought your bike, you set it up, you got all your protective equipment, you joined the TRF, and now you're out. You're out on your bike. Um, the first time you go out, you don't need to be you don't have to think you're Billy Bolt. Um, you don't have to be riding as though you know what you're doing because you don't. And we, and, and we all start from somewhere. And um, yeah. So while you're out riding, as you can see, this is farmland. So these are sheep, there's cattle, there's animals. And somebody owns all this stuff. So be respectful for um, livestock, for the area, for people. Because all these walkers and all these do-gooders and all these things want don't want us anymore. They don't want us up here. They don't want us damaging their environment, damaging their peace and stuff like that. So when when there's times and places when you see people um, about slow down for them. You see farm farms. Most of the places you're going to be is going to be farmland and there's going to be a farm somewhere. When you go near his farm, slow down. Don't rev your bike. Don't be an ass. Can I say that? One day, all of this here could be taken away from us. Now, what are you going to do? Also, uh, so I forgot to mention is when you're on these roads, your bike needs to be taxed, MOT'd, and insured. Because this is just like any other road, apart from it hasn't got any tarmac on it. So, you've got to be legal. Your bike has got to be road legal. Some people you don't see very often nowadays and police will just, um, will just take it away. And probably crush it. Yeah, so be respectful. That was a farmer, that was a person that runs this land, I don't think, I don't know if they own it, I don't know if it's National Trust or what it is. Um, but yeah, they farm this land, they're, they're sheep. And this time of year at the moment is their lambing time. So, some of these fields you'll be seeing sheep with lambs, and you'll probably be seeing sheep that are going to be lambs. So don't scare them. It's open, so I'll leave it open. Gates. You come across a gate, if you find it open, leave it open. It's, um, if you find that it's locked, go through it and lock it again. So by now you should be um, out there on your green laner enjoying what you're doing, riding off-road. Now the only way that you can get better at riding off-road, well it's the same as anything, is get out there and practice. Your bike will do all sorts of weird things that other bikes don't do and you've got to learn how the bike reacts. If you've set your suspension up already things should be a little bit easier because people, you know, you talk about rebound and compression so you're off-road so this is only me, I'm no expert this is only what I've learned and this is what the conclusion I've come to. Somebody might tell me, oh you're wrong Si. Well, that may be, but not usually, <laughs> no. Um, you know, I'm no expert, but um, I used to have a, I had a problem with getting grip. So you're going up a hill, boulders and things, loose rock and that. Um, the back end uh, rebound and um, compression rebound were too hard so when it compresses when you hit a rock it doesn't really compress but then you rebound because it's turned up that much 
instead of slowly letting out and keeping the, um, the back wheel in contact with the floor, it bounces like a, like a pogo stick. So then your back wheel just keeps bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. It just keeps, it just keeps. And you get no grip. So by turning, you've already got your sag, which you need. Your sag's there for your travel of your whole back end suspension or your front with your preload. So that's that that sag puts you in the middle of your uh, of your shock that allows in the middle when you sat on it with all your gear that allows it to come up and go down to the bottom without bottoming out. That's what your sag is, I believe. Maybe wrong. If it is, comment down below. Something like that. So yeah, if you if you if you if your compression's too hard, it doesn't compress very well. And then when and your rebounds turned up, it just bounces like a pogo stick. So it's just doing that. So as it's doing that, instead of doing it slowly over rocks, you get no traction. So it just bounces all over the place. The back end, the back end is go boom, 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 and it's annoying. Your front end. If it's the same way, if it's not set up properly, it does basically the same. Because as you hit a rock with your front end, and your um, and your compression, your rebounds turn up. There's the water coming down here. Um, it does the same. So as you're going over a rock, it hits the rock and it bounces straight off, and then pole goes. And then probably it moves to the left or the right, hits another rock, and then the, wash, the front end washes out. So this place where we're going up to now in, in Grisdale, this bike used to do that. And it was like, why, why, why is it doing this? Why does my front end keep folding? And that's because of what it is. It's doing this instead of doing this. And depending on your weight and your riding style, it takes a little bit of getting used to. So you need to be click, click, clicking. If you've got your, you've got your compression and rebound on, on here, find how many it goes from top to bottom and start halfway. Find out what it does. And if it's still washing out the front end and it's still pole going and still thin, take it off a couple of clicks. Try it again still doing it, take it off a couple of clicks and you'll get there and it'll get to a position that, um, that you think wow this is awesome and the bike becomes easier to ride because instead of jumping and bouncing over rocks it rides over them with a the suspension which gives you more grip that's in easy terms and I think that's about right I think but if I'm not, please, experts, I'm no expert, comment down below. But yeah, while you're off-road, and you're doing your lanes, don't just pick the easy route, once you get to a position, you know what I mean. Without swapping, changing it, trying different styles, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, I can't get up there, well, what's the problem? So this here now, we've got boulders on each side of it, yeah, and they're all loose. So, if your suspension is not set up correctly, it's just going to pogo stick everywhere. You lose your front end. And then what are you going to do? Your back end's not going to um, get any. traction because all it's doing is pole going everywhere that's why you need to suspend yourself this is what they call boulder alley see this looks a little bit tame at the moment because it's got a lot of leaves on it and it's had a lot of water on it but in this in this in the summer it's um it's weird i don't know if somebody's i don't know it just looks a bit a bit more tamer than it used to be but this is this is you know a lot of people come up here and um well i can remember coming up here the first time um finding it very intimidating which is what you get used to and then while you're you're out and you're picking your lanes and you're picking your bits and you're looking ahead look ahead don't look in front of your wheel look ahead pick your route go 
don't look at what what, what what that rock there you see that rock there don't look at it look past it in between it look past it you you walk right over it that's another thing you need to do you need to tell your brain you need to get your brain into um into gear and switch because if you look at something in front of you all you're going to do is ride into it you know you can watch your um videos and stuff on uh, YouTube what's Billy Bond what's the stuff he does where he's riding when he's in Romania and things like that and how his body position is to what terrain try it on your bike it's like here now I think I did a video not a couple of weeks ago um, we came up here and um, you should just be pop, 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 all the way up here but you should be positioned with your arms nearly, nearly extended, nearly fully extended. You're gripping with your um, bottom of your um, bottom of your feet on your pegs and against your frame. And your knees are nearly at 90 degree. And your and your bum is about three inch off your seat. And you're lying back, and that gets your front end loop uh, uh, weight off your front end, so it allows it just to go bu -bu 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 all the way up. Try it. Try different things. But it's you know when you are out and about, you know, put your back brake on. See what the bike does. Let it let it do what it wants to do. Try this when you when you when you're out. Because one day you might need it, you know. Move your handlebar slightly, press it, see what happens. Keep pushing the boundaries of it of the way you ride. And practice and practice and practice. That's all you can do. You're not a full expert, you've got to start somewhere. We all got to start somewhere, we all got to do. And um possibly following um the tips that um we've just talked about on the way here uh, may help you get into green laning. Trials. Trials is great way to learn. Get yourself to inch perfect or uh, trial days. Have a look on YouTube. Um, Danny, Danny, Danny. Yeah, Danny. Danny Butler, no. Danny. Danny Butler. Danny Butler, trial tube. Have a look on him. Um, we've all got to start somewhere. You know, get out there and have a go. If you're going to do it, do it safely. Do it legally. Find out where all your lanes are. Join a club. Join a group of people. If you need any help or any advice or anything, if you'd like to know anything, please comment down below. Uh, I'll ask if you've got anything else that I haven't covered that you think that I probably should have covered. Tell me about it. You don't need to spend a lot of money on your bike. Something that goes, it's road legal. Start on something you're not frightened of uh, throwing on the floor. Because you are going to throw it on the floor and you're going to fall off. <coughs> One of the things that I would tell you, I'd advise you, that if you are going to fall off, let the bike go. Don't try and save it. Because it could land on you and do all sorts of things. There's not much to break on these. They haven't got fairings and stuff like that. What are you going to do? If you, if you have full guards on, you're not going to even break a, a clutch or a brake lever. So just let it go. Just break it. If you've got all the way to the end, thanks very much for watching. If you did enjoy that video, please give it a big thumbs up. And any help, anything you'd like to know, please comment down below. I'll get back to you. It might not be straight away, but, you know, if anything I can help you with, I've got all this all the way on my own. Um, it's like I say, like I said at the beginning, it's a bit like fly fishing and um, stuff like that. It's all like a black art. You've got to be born into it. You don't. It's you just need to know the routes and the, and the, and the place to go to it. If you do get yourself a green lane bike and you're out there, it allows you to ride bikes all year round. That's why I do a bit of it. Um, and if you are still riding out there, ride safe, be safe, keep safe. Oh, by the way, if you've just stumbled across it, go on, please. Just just press that subscribe button down there and ring that bell please go on subscribe please thanks um yeah so if you're out there riding ride safe be safe keep safe and um as they say as they say as they say see you soon oh yeah i forgot to tell you all as well got your green lane bike you've been out on it a few times you fancy doing some awesome lanes in the lake district um check out our sponsors down below www.epicmotorcycletours.co.uk check out the website uh links down below and um, tell them I sent you. All right. Like and subscribe. <laughs>